contact please refer to the part 21 of this video series these are all real exam questions the chances of passing this exam is very high you might get same or similar questions in the exam please focus on the concepts and subscribe to my channel so you can go to this playlist this i have marked here it has currently there are 20 videos so you can refer this playlist for all previous questions that is from question 1 to 105 so let's focus on this one the first one is talking about international standards across all industries so ISO will fit the bill here because this is the international organization for standardization hence the answer here should be ISO now the next one it is talking about which organization defines standards for US government so this is the organization National Institute of Standards and Technology so most of these services resources and labs and so on are covered let's look at the third one it talks about a European policy to regulate data privacy and data production so this we all know GDPR is the one the full form is general data protection regulation basically what it does is the data in Europe cannot move outside Europe so basically that is what the question is asking to regulate the data privacy and production see the last one is talking about you know a dedicated cloud for federal and state agencies in US see for military purposes for government use purposes governments would not use open public clouds there has to be a separate data center so consider this cloud as a dedicated instance for mission critical purposes and it is only for US federal state and tribal governments and who control the access and operations only screen US citizens that means they should have gone through security checks and background checks from FBI so this is the answer so just out of curiosity as your government do we have something like as your government for other countries no why because us is the supreme country okay they should get all privilege all uh, things first in their life then it should go to other countries so what this question is saying is you have a user who is an active directory user okay this active directory is on an azure platform if you see this i've put active directory on azure so this is an azure platform and a user with anonymous ip is trying to access maybe you are a valid user you are trying to access active directory and the moment you do that from an anonymous ip you should get a prompt to change your passwords now out of these options let's look at the first one that is connect health now if you see the documentation connect health it provides monitoring on your on so this is the keyword it, it provides monitoring of your on premises identity infrastructure here are we talking about on prem no for sure no because we are only talking about azure here azure is a cloud platform of microsoft you see here 
we are on Azure, so there is no on-prem in question. The moment you see the word connect, you should memorize this, that connect means from Azure, it's trying to connect to on-prem. So this is the wrong answer. Let's move to option B, that is PIM, Privilege Identity Management. So if you see this definition, it is used to enable a user to manage, control, and monitor access to important resources in your organization. These resources may be on Azure. See, PIM is a different purpose. It is not going to prompt for a password change. When you see a user needs to be prompted for password change, that is a security measure. That means something wrong is happening because of the anonymous IP and you need a security measure. Let's move to ATP. So if you just apply common sense, you will see threat protection has to do something with security as well as AD identity protection has something to do with security. Okay, so if you keep it simple and stupid, if you want to apply that concept, options A and B are state cut wrong. So let's look at ATP first. What does ATP do is it only works with your on-premises, but it's saying here leverage your on-premise AD signals. Okay, so our question talks about Azure Cloud, not on-prem. So C is wrong. That leaves us with D, that is identity protection. So this is our answer because this exactly does these things. It will automate the detection and remediation of identity-based risks because it has sign-in risk policies and user risk policies. So option D is the right answer. Let's move forward. We have three questions in one question. The first one says to implement MFA solution, you must sync on-prem identities to cloud, not required. You can use it as it is. If you do not have on-prem and you only have AD set up in Azure Cloud, you can still use MFA, okay? Hence, the answer here would be no. Let's look at the second one. It says two valid methods for MFA are picture identification and passport number. No, that's wrong. These are not the two valid methods. So if you see, these are the methods. Out of these, you can use passport number and picture identification is not. Hence, no is the answer. Even if you apply common sense, it's obvious. Nobody will ask you for a passport number or a picture upload to just verify it. It has to be something of a OTB sort of code or some validator app and so on. Let's look at the last one. The MFA can be required for administrative and non-administrative user accounts. Yes, that is right. Both accounts can use MFAs. So this is the final answer. Let's lock this and move forward. Let's look at this one. There are two types of customers are eligible for Azure government. Like I told, Azure government is for the supreme country in this world, which is USA. So how it can apply to Canadian government? It cannot apply to European government. It is only applied to the prince of the prince country that is United States. So C and the, you have to choose two options and D. These are the two answers and the hack to answer such questions is Azure government. Azure is a company from Microsoft. Microsoft is a company which was formed in USA. They will make things first for US government and then for other governments. Okay, that's why it will only apply to United States as at this point in time. This is the last question for this part. Let's look at this. AD requires implementation of domain controllers on Azure virtual machines. So if you see this documentation, it clearly says join VM to a domain without controllers. Hence, the answer here would be no. Okay, let's look at the next one. AD can provide authentication to resources on Azure like VMs, Azure SQL Server and Microsoft 365. Yes, it See, AD they have designed as a universal uh, authentication solution. Okay, so it can work for all of the Microsoft products. The last one talks about 
each user account in AD can be assigned only one license. That's not a norm. So this is the final answer. Subscribe to my channel. Do not forget to visit this playlist which has so many videos, so many questions. And if you go to my playlist, there is one more playlist on AZ900. Those questions are still relevant. So you can refer to those as well. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part. Bye.